So today we're not actually going to be doing any guitar stuff. We're going to actually be talking about in-ear monitors. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm kind of new to the world of in-ear monitors. Um, the guys that I play with the most, they've been running uh, in-ears with a wired connection uh, for the last several years. And I've been carrying around a floor wedge for my vocals. Uh, this year, uh, you know, I took a couple uh, years off from COVID. I came back. They gave me my gig back, which was nice. Um, but I kind of wanted to update everything I was doing. And one of the things was I had bought a set of Shure uh, SE425 in-ears uh, right before COVID and I didn't have a wireless setup. I didn't understand that I wasn't able to, with our QSC touch mix system, which is the digital mixing board that we use, uh, they only had two wired outs for it and the third one would have been wireless. And uh, most of the inexpensive options that were out there didn't seem very reliable to me. So I really did not um, did not embrace the in-ear thing. <laughs> Plus, I just hate the sound of my guitar through headphones and through in-ear monitors and stuff. So I kind of put it off. A few months ago, though, the, the band leader for that band said, Hey, I've got this really cool wireless uh, thing. It's pretty inexpensive that I'm using when I sub in other people's bands. It's called, uh, what is this thing called? I always mispronounce this. Uh, uh, XV U4, and it's a, a wireless receiver um, that costs only about $229, uh, and it works really easy. So we're going to talk about this guy, but then the other thing we're going to talk about is the fact that I found, or was suggested to me, a set of fairly inexpensive in-ear monitors uh, that really sounded way better to me for my needs than the Shure, uh, the 425s, which cost about $270. These were $49 on Amazon. So I'm gonna kind of go through a little bit of um, both things and how I use them and the pluses and minuses. Um, and then we'll have links below for this stuff if you guys actually are interested in buying this stuff and wanna support the channel. So the first thing is, uh, let's talk about the, the in-ear monitors. Now I had the uh, Shure SE 425 CL, professional sound isolating earphones with dual high definition micro drivers, secure in-ear fit. I had two problems with these, and one of them was the fact that it never fit in my ear. <laughs> like I could never get it to uh, sit consistently. So uh, I would get very little low end or very little bass uh, in my ears. Um, and then the other thing was I just didn't really like how they sounded. Um, especially my guitar. My guitar was terrible sounding through it. And lately, if you've been following the channel, you know that uh, this year I also made a change in my live rig, which is I'm using a Fractal FM3. So we're getting a really clean, direct guitar tone uh, straight into the board. So it should sound really good. We're not messing around with microphones or anything like that. So one day on my forum, the markweenguitarlessons.com forum that I run, uh, one of the guys said, hey, I found these great $50 in-ear monitors uh, on the base talk form. Someone suggested them for me. And I went, you know what, let's let's give them a try. I got nothing to lose. I really need a second uh, set of these anyway as a backup because stuff happens. So I ordered a pair. Turns out I really preferred these monitors. And I'll give you the, the model name here. It's, it's KZ ZS10 Pro. I'll put the info here. Um, and there's a couple things about them that are a little bit different. One of them is that they've got... Uh, basically five drivers. It says four BA and one DD driver, and I guess that's the, the technology for each of these things. Um, but my voice sounds a lot more natural through it when I'm singing. Uh, there's a lot more clarity in the upper end without it being fatiguing, which for me, having to harmonize with two other people on a really loud stage, like ridiculously loud stage sometimes, uh, it's made a huge difference, not only in my ability to sing in tune with the other singers, but also vocal fatigue. I'm not singing as hard all night, all right? So that's another thing that I'm, I'm really happy about with, with these. Um, the the Shures just didn't work for me in, uh, in that regard. It's just, I don't know why, I just didn't prefer them. So that, that's the thing with these, they're inexpensive. Uh, the first set I did get, I sent back because they had a bad cable. Uh, people used to complain, I've watched a bunch of videos about the uh, original cable system was prone to kinking. Uh, the new ones have a little bit more of a normal thing. Um, they've got this two pin uh, um, plug on here, which seems to work just fine. One thing that may have helped me quite a bit with uh, the new ones is that I also got the Comply uh, Isolation Plus uh, uh, memory foam tips. Now these guys, um, usually in your monitors, 
in my little bit of experience. They either come with these rubber things that don't seem to do anything, or they've got um, what seems like a foam end. These guys are, uh, you, I'll, I'll put some real um, pictures or artwork of a, up of that, but um, these seem to really keep it snug uh, to the point where I get a really balanced sound. Um, most of my gigs are, uh, they're three set, three and a half hours worth of music. Uh, they're loud, you sweat a lot, <laughs> which with the other ones, as you would sweat, they'd kind of move around your ears. Um, these with the comply tips, and then also the fact that these have a little bit of a, uh, a bigger size and shape, these actually fit in my ears pretty well. I'm one of those people that like Apple earbuds never really worked for me because they just literally don't sit in my ears very well and they don't stay. Um, these things have been awesome. I never have a problem once I put them in. Um, most nights I start off uh, with just one in my left ear, the drum set side. Um, and then if the night gets super loud, I'll put the other one in almost more for hearing protection than monitoring. Um, and for me as a guitar player, um, you know, I don't really care for hearing my guitar through these uh, as much as not through them. You know, and they're inexpensive monitors. Uh, but when things get loud, you're, you're getting a lot of low end and you're getting a bunch of the sound um, from your on stage or speaker. I use a, a I use a separate wedge for my FM3. So I, I have plenty of stage volume and then this kind of like fills back in the high and upper mid range that's kind of missing when you're wearing some ear protection. So um, it's been really cool for that, you know. So it supplements my guitar sound on loud stages. It provides a little bit of hearing protection. Um, most of you probably know all this stuff, but like I said, I'm new to in-ear monitors. So, um, so I'm really happy with these. Um, believe it or not, um, our bass player switched to the two driver set for $20. I think he had them as backups already and he had never used them. And after we played uh, some shows a couple weeks ago and he used those, he preferred those to his shares. He had the SE 250s, I think. And our drummer, who also has uh, the full range of Shure in-ear monitors, he bought a set of these and he didn't like them. So I traded in my <laughs> my $260 Shure uh, 425s for a set of $50 um, ZS10 Pros. And I'm totally good with that. I, I'm, I'm happy, he's happy, um, everyone's happy. All right, so the next part of this equation is the wireless part of it. Now, um, I was really looking at the singer in another group I play and just spent nearly a thousand dollars on a Sennheiser wireless setup that's like a 5G with a whole deal and the base station and all that stuff. And um, like I said, I've been spending money on guitar stuff. I really not too excited about spending money on my monitors, but um, my friend, the drummer from my main band, he was lending me his XV um, X4 or U4 receiver. Uh, when I went to the NAMM show this year, uh, which is the beginning of June, I actually went and spoke to them at their booth. And, um, you know, I mean, they, they, they said the things you expect a company to say, but they said, you know, you, you know, you're, you basically have like a, a four hour battery window. And then some of the literature actually says five hours. Um, I have not had a battery problem. I do have to remember to charge these things. And um, you can see here on the side. You got a little USB thing. They give you a little double-headed USB uh, charging cable, uh, and then you plug it into like your iPhone charger or whatever. Um, it takes about an hour to charge these, so it's not the, the worst thing. And I have yet, I've probably played about 20, 25 shows with this. Um, I've yet to have any battery problem, so that makes me pretty happy. Um, the sound quality is, is good. I mean, it's going in an ear and monitor, so it's not, <laughs> all right. Uh, um, these run at 2G. I was a little, or uh, 2.4. I was a little nervous about that because I heard everyone say, well, you're gonna have, in these venues you play, you're gonna have a lot of interference from, um, you know, mobile devices and all that stuff. And when I talked to the guy at the NAMM show, he said, well, you know, it's got six channels on it. So if you do run into a problem, just find another channel. I have yet to have a problem. I have not moved it off of, I, for some reason I put it on channel two. <laughs> Uh, when I first got it, and I haven't had to change that. So uh, when you use it, this part goes into your PA mixer. And you can see it's got like a, a XLR end on it. Uh, it would plug into your output. On the QSC Touch Mix, they've got uh, five or six auxiliary outs. Each one of those can be routed to 
uh, in the software and then you can kind of generate everyone's independent mixes from there so on my iPad I can I can basically take the entire mix that's available to front of house and I can determine what I want to hear in my own monitors separately from what the other two guys have in theirs which is really nice uh, it does come with an adapter to go to quarter inch my own personal mixer is kind of an old Mackie like a 1604 or something like that and it doesn't have more than two um, auxiliary sends so uh, when I use that one this comes with a quarter inch adapter I just plug it into the uh, auxiliary send uh, for one of those two and I just use those aux sends for each channel to bump up whatever I need to hear so super easy super convenient uh, it's got two switches on it a power switch and then uh, either auxiliary or line level um, mine is in auxiliary and I've it's plenty loud which is fine and there's a button for changing channels if I was to turn this on you can see the lights alright and there's me changing channels as it goes around let me put it back to two or I'll be very confused at the next show and then this guy's the belt pack um, if I turn him on um, all this has is the power switch it's got a button for changing channels so it links up with uh, the transmitter and then it's got a volume control uh, and then it, you know it can go on your belt or on your guitar strap or whatever uh, super easy to use I'm really happy with it I haven't had a single problem uh, the other thing I might do is I might get a second set of everything just because I'm one of those freaks that like needs redundancy I'm always afraid something's gonna die or a battery's gonna go out or I'll forget to charge something or whatever um, but in reality you know this is $229 for uh, one set of stuff they've got a number of packages like if I look here on Amazon um, you can get one uh, one transmitter with four receivers, which means that like you can run one monitor mix for four people. They could do that um, <clears throat> by just the receiver. I guess if you just want an extra one of those, uh, I got the receiver and transmitter. They also have the two receiver plus one transmitter for like three hundred forty bucks. Um, one of the guys that uh, subs for me. He uses one of these for his uh, in-ears, and then he also uses one of these with a different transmitter for his guitar. And I will look that up and see which device that is. I think it's kind of a different thing. So anyway, for about $300, uh, I was able to put together an in-ear monitoring system that works uh, really well for my purposes. Um, yeah, I'm not doing any major touring with this stuff. I play local gigs. I do bars, I do private parties, I do um, I do Calypso band things and retirement <laughs> homes. Um, you know, I, I, um, I've done original shows and things like that. Uh, and, and it's it's been reliable. So there, there you have it. No guitar today. Um, if you like any of this stuff and you're interested in, in purchasing it, maybe supporting the channel, uh, look below the video. There'll be Amazon affiliate links uh, and we get a small percentage of those purchases. Thanks a lot.